Welcome to Arts Roll Call, a podcast showcasing artists and arts organizations, highlighting the role of the arts today in Greater Lansing. I'm Robin Miner Swartz. I'm an editor, communications consultant, and a lifelong arts advocate. And today I'm talking with Sarah Hillman, a Lansing based multimedia artist. Sarah was born in South Africa, raised in Namibia, and moved to Michigan permanently after high school. She works in a variety of media, including watercolor, digital painting, ceramic sculpture, and rock art, where she finds rocks on the beach and glues them onto mat boards to create pictures. She's written and illustrated two children's books of her own and illustrated several for other authors as well. And she loves to experiment, but the subjects of her work are pretty constant, nature and people. She loves using her art to celebrate the beauty of the natural world and tell stories about people and their lives. Sarah, welcome to Arts Roll Call. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, hey. thank you for having me. Well, let's start with your background. I just mentioned you were born in South Africa and raised in Namibia. How did you come to Michigan and find your way to Lansing? My dad came here to do his doctorate at MSU, and uh, my whole family came in tow, myself and my three sisters and my mom. So, yeah, that's, I guess that's how we got here. And then the, I, the original plan was that we would only be here while he was studying, but, you know, you meet people, you marry them, you buy houses. <laughs> life. And then and then life happens and we all ended up staying. So my parents, oh, wow. all of my sisters live here. Had you had any connection to Michigan or Lansing prior to that? Not even a little bit. Oh wow. It, it yeah, it feels entire it felt entirely arbitrary, I think. It just it was the way it worked out. <laughs> so well, I, I'm, I'm hoping and assuming that you found we have a, a strong and supportive arts community here in Greater Lansing. Um, can sure, you talk a little bit about what it's like to be a part of that? Um, probably a good example of how supportive and how integrated the arts community is, is that just recently when the billboards started going up, um, Lucy, whose billboard was is the first one, she reached out to all of us and said, hey, you know, let's get together. Let's meet each other. Let's have coffee or wine or all of the above. And uh, we weren't able to get everybody in on the first meet, but it was Mary and Lucy and myself. And we went out and we spent hours sitting around in Bigby, just burbling and learning about each other and talking about our different mediums and our training or complete lack thereof. And you know, where we'd lived in the world and what we'd done and, and showed each other pictures of our stuff. And it was just really fun. And then we reached out to the other artists saying, hey, we'd done this and it was, let's do it again. Would you guys like to join in? So I just, and it was so fun to meet other people who love art and make art. And um, Lucy's a muralist. I didn't even know that that was a job that you could have, that somebody would hire you to paint ginormous dinosaurs for museums, but how amazing is that? So yeah, it was just, it was a, it was really fun. And there are so many artists in the Lansing area. And I guess everyone that I've had the luxury of meeting so far has been pretty amazing. So yeah, I love that. That's great. Well, so as you mentioned, you're, you're part of the Arts Council's Arts, uh, Art in the Sky billboard program this year, um, and your billboards are up on display now. What is it like seeing your art supersized like that? So I'll be honest, they only just started um, rolling out all of them. And because I have been up north with my parents for the weekend, I have yet to actually see my billboard. I've seen Lucy's because mm -hmm. when we met for coffee, I photographed her in front of her billboard, we stood shivering in the wind, waiting for her while they cycled through, waiting for hers to show up so that I could snap some pictures really quickly with her phone. Um, so I did see Lucy's, which was awesome. Um, but I have not seen mine yet, but I'm very excited to see it. It sounds like you're in that space where you're, um, I'm betting, about to be inundated with like texts from friends who have spotted it in the wild and are, and start I sending hope them your so. way. It'll be really fun because I did put it on my Facebook page and my Instagram when when I found out, and people were super supportive and very enthusiastic. So I am very excited to see, I guess, what it looks like and how people respond to it. That's great. Well, how did you first discover the Arts Council of Greater Lansing? What has that relationship been like for you? 
So um, in the interest of being entirely honest, I actually had to ask Dawn <laughs> to refresh my memory. I, uh, my mother says I took the scenic route through college, so I have a lot of holes in my memory. Um, but she's not wrong. Um, <laughs> but I, I think it actually started because I did, there was an arts display for the RDC, the Refugee mm. Development Center, and I did a piece for that. And I think that may have been at that event was where I met Dawn. And then she told me about the Arts Council. And then I signed up. And then later that same year, I did an arts night out sort of display at the Arts Council, you know, where they give you that wall and you can put all your things on it, which was super fun. And then a table that you can fill up with wine and cookies. Um, <laughs> all good things. I was say, which is the best part of any art display. Right. <laughs> um, and so, um, and then I've just been a member ever since. So, yeah. Well, I would love to hear about your portraits. Um, you've created some pieces featuring characters uh, like those you find in Alice in Wonderland and, and and celebrity pieces too. Bob Ross, who I love, Dolly Parton, who I also love, and Nina Simone. Like you, you've you picked all these people who I fangirl over a lot too. So Yay! no pun intended, what drew you to drawing these folks? Um, you know, initially it was... So I didn't used to work in digital until very recently. My sister convinced me when I was illustrating my second book, my second kid's book, she convinced me that the entire process of illustration would be so much easier if I did it working in a digital medium. And I felt like such a traitor because um, I had done my first book in watercolor. Mm -hmm. And then I bought an iPad and I downloaded the, at the time, $5.99 Procreate app which gives you a blank page and about a thousand pens mm -hmm. and a wheel of every imaginable color. And then you can draw. And it was, um, it was an interesting process of working through all of my hangups about, you know, digital art isn't real art and mm -hmm. just all of the sort of very traditionalist views that I had apparently adopted without realizing. Um, and then, and then I guess once I started, working with digital realizing you know if i'm if i'm ever going to be any good at this i have to practice and so i just started doing portraits of things that were recognizable of people who were recognizable so that i had some sort of gauge for how well i was doing like how much does this actually look like harriet tubman when it's done or does it just look like harriet tubman's cousin um and so it was initially it started out as a way to practice and get better with the medium and the format. And then once I started, I realized, oh, I kind of like doing people's portraits and did more and more of them. And initially it was just people who I found inspiring. Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of um, abolitionists and civil rights leaders and um, suffragettes. And, but then I guess the more I did it, people would say, oh, you should do Elvis or, oh, you should do. So I've lately done quite a few portraits that weren't necessarily people. I mean, not that I have any kind of personal issue with Jim Morrison or whatever. It's just sure. I guess he wouldn't have made it onto my list of like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Must <Yeah>. draw. <laughs> right. Exactly. But, you know, but it's been interesting to just and really there is something about sitting down and spending hours looking at someone's face mm -hmm. and working through it because you think about them and you think about who they were as a person and what you know about them and about their life. And, and it's very, and of course, everyone that I draw, I like to go and read up about them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's been, it's been interesting over the last couple of years to learn about a lot of people's lives and um, achievements. And, and I feel like it's been good for me as an artist. I've got better at both at working in the digital medium, but also just at rendering people so that they look like themselves and not their cousins. Right. <laughs> well, you mentioned writing and at the, at the top, I mentioned that you're also a writer and an illustrator. Can you talk a little bit about how you discovered the storytelling piece of yourself and how that became illustrating and writing books? So the storytelling part probably happened at around the same time that the drawing part did. Um, before I learned to write, I used to write books, 
Um, but I just drew the pictures and then I would sit next to you, according to my mom, I don't remember, and tell the stories to people, just turn the pages, you know, they would be stapled together books or just a stack of pictures. And then I would flip through them and tell the story. And then I learned to write. So then I would write single sentences at the top of the page. And then as I guess the the writing ability grew, the stories got longer and longer, but I have written stories for as long as I remember and illustrated them. And I've always liked stories. I've always loved to read. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I love a good book. So I like to write a good story. Whether or not my stories are as good as I would like them to be, yeah. up for debate, but I do, I do like to, I guess, I do like to tell stories. And I had little kids and I told them a lot of stories. So most of my stories were for kids. I was just going to say your kids probably gave you great feedback about your stories. My kids are very brutally real. Right. <laughs> not, not every story was well received. <laughs> but, you know, they're they're a good test audience for things. But Of course. Yeah. So most of the early stories, I guess, that I hoped to do something with that I ended up actually illustrating and publishing were written for my kids, mm. usually about my kids, too. Uh -huh. So which they didn't always love. Well, sure. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's that's the downside of having a creative parent, though, right? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so what for you is the difference um, between, in your approach between when you're illustrating a story you have written versus illustrating someone else's story? Um, I think in some ways it's easier to illustrate my own stories because I knew while I was writing them what they looked like in my mm -hmm. head. Mm -hmm. um, when you are illustrating for someone else, it's not your vision. It's someone else's vision that you're trying to capture. Although I guess depending on who you are illustrating for determines whether or not that's an easy process. The first person I ever illustrated a book for, um, she was so easy to work for. And she just said, oh, you know, this is what I want. And I drew her two or three test images and sent them and she was like oh that one it's perfect and I thought oh god that was easy and then after that it was a very smooth process there was very few revisions that had to be done um and I thought oh this is so easy I could do this all day and then of course the next contract was for a publishing company that was doing um a pilot program of graphic novels for oh. literacy comprehension for third graders and I was hired to do um, some of the stories. They let me write three of the stories, which was really fun, um, but I only got to illustrate one of the three that I had written. And it was a very challenging process because there were a million revisions mm. based on all kinds of things that I didn't even know were factors. You know, like, oh, kids in this age group want to see other kids dressed in these colors and not these colors. And I'm like, wait, what? That's a thing. <laughs> OK, you know, <laughs> kids in this age group want to see kids with this colored hair, this colored hair, but not that. I'm like, that's a thing. So, yeah, it was, new. <laughs> it, was right, it was really interesting. And they, you know, they I, you would submit stuff and then they would send it back and say, change this thing, change that thing. And so that was that was considerably more. But I think they also had a a much wider audience and probably a much pickier audience. Mm, sure. So, you know, but yeah, so it's, it was interesting just the two different experiences. Um, but yeah, it's always easier when you're doing it for yourself because you know what you want. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I actually really enjoy the process of illustrating other people's stories. It is, it is fun. I mean, it's easier for me, but it is still very enjoyable to do it for someone else. It's something I'd like to do more of. It probably works a different part of your brain in a way. This is true. This is true. I guess I haven't thought about. Well, we've talked about all of these different media you work in, for stones, painting people of, of different cultures and backgrounds, and you have a section on your website that's even dedicated just to birds, which I love. What attracts you to all of these different mediums? Um, I think the the different mediums is because I probably honestly would get bored if I just had one. Um, when I started painting, I was painting in acrylic, which I still sometimes do and I enjoy. Um, but watercolor is beautiful. And I've, I always wanted to be able 
to paint in watercolor. And so, I don't know. So I tried it and I didn't suck at it. And that was wonderful. Um, and then I tried oils and I did suck at that. Mm. So yeah, that was, that was pretty quickly abandoned. Um, rocks. I love rocks. My dad was a rock nerd. My dad is a rock nerd. Mm -hmm. um, so I grew up in a house full of rocks. And when we moved to Michigan, actually going to, my husband took me to the beach shortly after we got married. And I don't know that I'd ever been to a beach with that many rocks before. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. Um, Michigan has such beautiful rocks. Yeah. And I, it was, I guess, part of what helped me fall in love with Michigan was finding these really beautiful beaches that were full of really beautiful rocks. And mm -hmm. I would just take my five gallon Menards bucket down there <laughs> and pick rocks for <laughs> hours and hours and hours. And then I would bring them back and put them in the garage. And we reached a point where I think I probably had nine buckets full of rocks. And my husband was like, <laughs> if you don't do something with these rocks, I'm going to fill holes in the driveway with them. <laughs> and I thought, no, you can't use my beautiful rocks that I selected for driveway holes. Right. Um, so I have to find something to do with them to justify continuing to go back and get more rocks. So um, I started making maps of Michigan. My dad is a geographer and so our house always had maps and rocks and globes and so yeah, I started making these big maps of Michigan with all of the stones and that sort of evolved into pictures of, you know, people doing things, living life. I don't know. Um, but yeah, the more rocks I made art with and the more people I was willing to, or that I was able to convince to give me money for them, the more I used up my rock stash and the more I was able to justify going back to the beach with a bucket. So <laughs> and it's like free therapy. That's great. <laughs> So, well, so what are you working on now? Um, well, now, because it's December. Or the broad we, now. <laughs> most, I was going to say, mostly I'm frantically trying to finish commissions mm -hmm. before Christmas, which is a whole hodgepodge of stuff. People order rock art and um, birds and, you know, and thankfully prints of things that I've already finished. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but... But yeah, in the broad now, the much bigger now, um, I have a, a kid's book I'm slowly picking away at the illustrations for. Um, I had promised my kids, to their chagrin, that I would write a book about each of them. And I did my, my two biological kids books are finished, but we had a foster daughter for um, quite a number of years before she aged out of the system. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a book for her while she was with us I just haven't finished illustrating it yet. So I'm picking through those illustrations and uh, probably about halfway. And then also just working on a series that I unimaginatively refer to as human nature, which is supposed to be about the the intersection of, of people and nature and the role that we play in the natural world. And I guess exploring the idea that what makes people sacred is not their dominion over nature, but their integration into it. Mm. And the part that they play as, you know, as I guess a role of equality in nature. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's it's something I'm unraveling slowly in my brain. I've been reading books about, I don't know, bones and funguses and bits and pieces <laughs> of <laughs> trees. I love trees. Um and just trying to figure out where we fit into that dynamic and, you know, what role we should be playing versus the role that we so often are playing mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and what that looks like. So, yeah, I don't know. That's, That's awesome. Big now. <laughs> well, where can people find you online, Sarah? Um, I have a Facebook page that I'm generally pretty good about updating. I have an Instagram account that I'm usually pretty good about updating. <laughs> and I have a website that I am mostly done putting together. Um, it looks finished. It just doesn't have all the art on it that I had wanted to put there. But, um, but yeah, it's it's a slow process. Um, well, it's it's always the last thing you can get to, right? Because everything else is is such a higher priority. And it sounds like you're you're juggling roughly fifty seven things at any given time. So I would understand that the website ticks down. 
It it does. It's also intimidating. And I think things that mm -hmm. are intimidating to me often get shuffled to the back a little bit. So same. Yeah. <laughs> but well, Sarah, thank you so much for talking with me today. I really enjoyed learning about all of your kinds of art, and I, I'm looking forward to following your career now that I know all the places to find you. Yay! Well, thank you so much for talking to me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> well, thank you again for being here, and this podcast has been a production of the Arts Council of Greater Lansing. To learn more about them, go to lansingarts.org. Thank you.